This is Clint uh, making a quick recording to uh, just kind of train up how the dynamic table of contents works inside of Google Docs with uh, hierarchy. Uh, so I'm going to show you a real quick demo how this works. I'm going to go in and create a new document. Here it is. And I'm going to put in some things that have sort of a structured content. So my favorite animals, my favorite plants, my favorite food. And I've got these in here and I'm going to start putting in additional information in here. So here is my, my favorite sea animal is squid. My fave dog is uh, German Shepherd. Not sure. I love all dogs. Um, okay, so I've got this started, and before I do anything, let me think which way I want to show this to you. So we've got all of this text, and all of this text is set as normal text style up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to because this is a sort of a header for this content. I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to give it a header of I'll give it a heading two. And I'm going to do this for all of these headings, even though trees, vines, tacos, pizza. I'm going to create this for each one of these real quick. And when I do this, it creates this structure inside of the Google Doc, which is only apparent if you're up here and you can see that this text is normal, this text is a heading two because we're building a hierarchy in this piece. And if I go above this, I can insert a table of contents. And the table of contents sort of works similar to how the document outline works over here. It's taking the structure and it's building this into, into this. So what I can do is, so this is grabbing all of the H2s. And for my H2, I'm going to put in Clint's favorite things. And I'm going to make that an H1. So if we look at the hierarchy, this is a, a heading one that has children underneath it. All of the heading twos with content, heading twos with content. If I go back up to my table of contents and I refresh, we see that hierarchy takes place. I've got Clint's favorite things. This is my H1, my H2, my H2, my H2. If I jump back in here, I'm going to create some subcategories in here. So this is going to be sea animals. This is going to be land animals. And I'm going to make this a heading three. You can see that it styles it like this. I'm going to go to this other one, and I could go to this drop down, go to heading three, but I can see there's a shortcut here too that command option three. So you can't see my keyboard, but command option three converts it into a heading three. Now, if I refresh my table of contents, I get that structure built right into here. Uh, it ignores all of the normal text, which are the paragraphs and the bullet points and all the stuff that you put in here. <clears throat> Excuse me, but it does uh, create this structure up here. Uh, one thing where this gets really powerful is that, all right, I'm going to create my subheadings for different types of trees, different types of vines, different types of tacos. I end up with all of these heading threes everywhere. And again, I refresh this and I see that structure. Uh, where this gets powerful is in the formatting. So I'm going to take my uh, heading three and say, you know what, I want all these heading threes to be underlined. So what I could do is I could select all of this text, I could hit underline, I could select all of this text, and you know, there might be hundreds of these, depending on your document. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that change to one of these, here's my heading three, and what I can do is I can go to this drop-down box and go to my heading three and update heading three to match, and it's going to make all of the heading threes match the style of the heading three I'm currently on. And I click, and they all get this underline, or it could be different color, or fonts, or font sizes, all of those pieces. Uh, so that's how you create this from scratch. And again, we would just call this table of contents. Spell it correctly. And our TOC is ready to go. So when I get a document like this, the scope and sequence working doc, uh, we'll come all the way up to the top and we'll come down where the table of contents is. If I click in the table of contents, we see this little refresh. This will update all of those headings into that table of contents the way that I've created them. <coughs> Excuse me again. And all I did was go through this document and I took your part one and everything that's at this level 
are hitting twos, everything at this level are hitting threes, everything at this level are hitting fours, because all of these things belong to each other. So the way we would talk about this is that part one is a sibling of part two. They're at that same level. And this aligning our, PP, our PSPE piece, that is a child of this heading up here because of that hierarchy. So in here, we've got, when we get down to here, we've got this, uh, this parent, which has peers of these pieces, and its children are all peers at that level. So all I needed to do was go into part one, make that a, a heading two, and then I'll come down, and I can see that this beliefs section, so this is again in the hierarchy, the next piece, uh, I just left that alone. But then when I got to here, this is a definite sub part of our guiding statements. So I made that a heading three. And I come down, I get to part two. This is going to be a sibling of part one, which is a heading two. So our part two should also be a heading two. And then we've got section A, which is a heading three. It's a child of that larger section. And we get into these other pieces. So this is a role of the IICS counselor, is a supporting piece of personal and social economic learning. So we've got a parent heading two with a child of heading three that again has another child of heading four as we're building that hierarchy of content within here. Uh, we'll come down a little bit. We've got the role of the homeroom teacher. That definitely should also be a heading four because it's at that same sibling level as the role of the counselor. Uh, so once you know the keyboard shortcuts, I mean, it's, it's really, here's a heading three, so it's command option, command option two, changes it to two, and we change it to three. So I'm just cruising through these documents looking for where the logical headers are and changing those into that hierarchy, heading one, heading two, heading three. Um, that's really all I'm doing. And then I'm coming up here and I'm inserting the table of contents. Can't do one inside of each other. But if I go to insert table of contents, there's two choices. Uh, here's one with page numbers, if you like that. Uh, only useful if you're printing this out all the time. I prefer to do the insert table of contents with the blue links. And then it creates a link to any of these, so we can go to the table of contents, click, and it will jump down to that section in here. Um, I think that's all I was going to cover with this. Uh, that's how it works. That's how the table of contents works. Uh, it's really just a matter of using good practices within the hierarchy of the document, uh, which is really, um, if you were creating this document from scratch, um, ideally this is what your outline would look like for you to fill in all the content into those pieces. Um, so it's really following that same philosophy of hierarchy within information to create this stuff. Um, one thing that I uh, personally do is that I make all of my top level things heading twos uh, because really this section up here uh, should be the heading one. Because think of this as a, a family tree. So you've got a heading one that's one core piece and then it branches out from there. Um, I'm not going to make this heading one because if I do, uh, one, it changes the style because the heading one style was different than that, but that's not a big deal. Uh, but where it gets a little messy is that when I refresh my table of contents, it grabbed that first heading one and made that the parent of everything below it, uh, which is structurally correct, but isn't necessarily what we're looking for. So let me step that back a little bit, and we're all good. Um, yeah, this went on a little longer than I expected, um, but there's a little bit to cover. So let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, bye.